High hole is a wonderfully simple process. It's, couldn't be done much easier than, than I think it, it is already. And uh, there's not a whole lot you need really to get started on setting up your pie hole. In order to set up the pie hole, we're going to have to have the proper materials to do so. For starters, we're going to need some sort of a Raspberry Pi. And I, I personally am using a Raspberry Pi 3, something like, like, you, like this. So this is the Pi 3, this is a B plus model. It has everything you need, specifically the Ethernet port, and a spot for a, an SD card, which brings me to the next part. You want to have an SD card. I, I'm personally using a, uh, a 32 gigabyte SD card. I think this is more than adequate. You can go with less space, but you know about 32 gigabytes, that'll leave you a lot of headroom for you know a lot of log re writes and read writes and so forth. Then you're gonna need like a high quality power supply. I, I'm using this one here that has a, uh, a power switch, inline power switch to turn on and off. And I, I prefer this to jerking the plug out either at the wall or on the unit. I think that you're just better off having an, a, uh, a switch right by it should there, uh, you know, you have to turn it off for whatever reason. So it's just way more convenient to have an inline plug. Also, this is, this is rated for three amps It'd be good. It's good to have one with a lot more uh, overhead when it comes to power, because sometimes you know you just might need it. Then you're gonna need some sort of a PC with a micro SD card reader, so you can you can image this SD card, and you will need some sort of a USB keyboard. Now I like this one because I can just pop on uh, this little dongle here. This Logitech, I happen to like the Logitech stuff because it, they do good work, they do a good job. Uh, so you can access your Pi, you know, uh, through directly. You will need to do that. Now you don't have to have a wireless one, you can have a wired, it doesn't really matter. Whatever USB keyboard you happen to have, that will be fine. Uh, I'll be surprised if it's not fine. I would recommend you put your Pi in a case. I mean, you don't have to, but it's a good idea. So this is a nice case you can choose. It's a, a Flerk case. Uh, this is for this is actually a Pi 4 here. You could use a Pi 4, but I feel like that's overkill. Uh, and this one here is kind of a it's a, a media computer uh, running OpenSUSE. But that's that's for another discussion for another time. And then you will need a monitor of some sort or a TV, and be able to plug into it. Uh, if you don't have uh, the HDMI cables necessary to do that, it's just for temporary setup, just just for the initial setup. Uh, you, you know, there are adapters out there you can get. Uh, this is an HDMI to uh, SVGA, since I happen to have a lot of older things in uh, in my world. Uh, this works great. I don't have any issues with that. The Pi can automatically adjust the resolution accordingly without a problem. So this is a good, uh, good alternative for that as well. And, and that's all you will really need to, uh, to get the Pi set up. After you get your... Raspberry Pi Imager installed. You have to choose your OS, and I recommend you use this Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite uh, Bullseye, the latest one. And then for your storage, choose your storage. I know that I have a 32 gigabyte SD card in my computer's card reader, and I know I have a secondary drive as well, that's one terabyte, so know your computer. Do not image the wrong drive. So I'm gonna choose this generic mass storage, 32 gigabytes, I know this is my SD card. And then you're going to write it to disk. Is all existing data on generic mass storage will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I do. And this will require you to input your root user password or your sudo or whatever you have, however your system's set up. It does require elevated privileges. It does take some time for it to write and verify the OS to the disk. So you'll have to be patient here. Thankfully, it does have a little uh, progress bar that is accurate. So enjoy watching that, or you can go off and do something else. You can cancel the verify if you really want, but I think it's better to err on the side of caution and go ahead and let it complete the process. So it'll give you a notification that you can now remove the SD card from the reader, but do not do that. Uh, that's not what I would recommend doing at this time. What I would recommend you do, the next thing to do is you want to give your Raspberry Pi 
uh, you want to give yourself secure shell access or SSH into your Raspberry Pi. It'll make the setup a lot easier to do. And I recommend using something like Dolphin, where if you go into the boot file system, it's a very simple command to do this. There's, I'm sure there's other ways of doing this, but this to me is the simplest way. We're going to do touch SSH. And that's going to create just a little file on the boot file, on the, uh, on the boot partition, which tells the uh, Raspberry Pi when it boots up to activate secure shell and allow you to uh, log into it, allow you to remote into it, I should say. So this is, that's the easiest way of doing it that I know of. Maybe there's better ways, but this is the way that I'd recommend you do it. So now we can go ahead and eject that card and we can load up the Raspberry Pi. It'll take a little bit for the uh, Raspberry Pi to boot up, but when it does, it'll resize the drive and everything else. So at this point, you can just go for the login. If you don't see the login pop up on the bottom, just hit enter, it'll, it'll pop back in. You know, log in with the default username and password. The default is Pi, and then the password is Raspberry. And then you're in. Now, what you want to do is you want to get the host IP address. So host name, TAC, capital I, you can do lowercase i too. And so here I see that it is 192.168.10.193. So just remember what that is. So 193. I'm good there. Everything else is the same as the rest of my network. But then before we leave, what you really need to do, I would say, don't even continue doing this project if you don't do this first, which is you need to set up a new password for the Raspberry Pi. Do not use the default password. It is uh, not a good idea. It's uh, in fact a really bad idea. To do that, to change the password, it's, it's very simple, P-A-S-S-W-D. And it's a uh, changing password for Pi. So the current password, we know what that is. Raspberry, and then I'm going to put a new password in, which can be whatever you want. I guess the longer the better, but I think most importantly, you need to remember it. You know, if you can throw in some some funny characters, that's cool, but uh, just make sure you, you can remember your password. And then I'll ask you to retype the password. And then Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. Now, what I like to do from here is, uh, although I could continue using the terminal like this, but I, I don't particularly enjoy this. It, there's a increased possibility for error. And uh, earlier I said to set up the secure shell access or, or, or remote access. I'm back at my, my main computer here and I'm going to log into it remotely. So it's SSH pi at, and then when I, the, uh, it's IP address. Yours will be different because your router is gonna likely hand out a different IP address. So don't copy this verbatim. And it's going to say, hey, here's the fingerprint. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Uh, you're probably pretty safe in saying yes. Or you can look at the fingerprint too, but I want to get this done the easy way. So yes, so permanently added that address to my list of known hosts. And I log into it. And now we are back into the Pi. Now the reason I recommend that is because you're going to have to uh, do some copying and pasting. So there is a command from pihole.net. So it's not just some random command off the internet. So curl is a command tool that, that enables data transfer over various network protocols. So curl is what we're going to use. I've uh, got a few options here and then install.pihole-pi-hole.net or tack hole and uh, pipe it to bash. So that's, that's what we're doing here. It's uh, nothing crazy. And you are doing it on your Raspberry Pi. So even if you do blow it up, um, you just put a new SD card or reimage SD card. So very low risk here, but just be, be advised, it's not a good idea to copy and paste random anything from the internet and put it in your terminal, especially as root user. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. That's gonna do a root user check. Everything checks out here because, well, it does. And it's going to update the local cache of available packages. This whole process takes a little while, be patient. Now, I, I do want to advise again, uh, I didn't have it on the, on the list of items and I didn't want to re-record this. So you're going to need an ethernet cable and pl probably plug it into an ethernet jack someplace. It's way easier to set up your Pi using ethernet. It's not required. You can set up Wi-Fi on it and it will work just as well as long as you understand how to do that. But this is the easy way. And so the easy way is to get an ethernet cable and you're going to really want ethernet on your final setup anyway. So you may have to uh, do this by your, your router. Here, this it tells you the installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker, and that's exactly what you want to do. 
and it's free but powered by your donations. So if this is something that you find valuable uh, and you can donate to the project because server space is not free, then uh, please do so at pi-hole.net slash donate. Now the pi-hole is a server, so it does need a static IP address to function properly. Now if you have not already set up a, a static address for it uh, or reserved an address, this is where you need to know how your router works again, and you're gonna have to set up specifically you know, where you want to have on your range of addresses. I have this set outside my DHCP range because I think that's safer, uh, but you know, consult your network professional on, uh, on what's best for you. So here I'm gonna say yes, I wish to continue. So I can say yes, static IP using the current address. So in this case, um, you can I can just leave that as, that as it is and I can assign that as a static address, but it is in my DHCP range and I don't wanna do that. Or I can set up a custom custom values. So here I can I can change this to whatever I want. So if I want to have it outside the range, I think my range starts at 100, so I could have it be something like 90, and that would be safe. I hit OK. And I do want to keep this gateway. This is the correct gateway, but also you're going to have to consult your router for what your gateway is. Chances are what the pie hole gets is the correct answer. It's going to ask me if this is correct. I'm going to say yes. Yes, it is correct. Now here you can select your upstream DNS provider, or you can use your own uh, custom if you wish. So here I'm going to use OpenDNS. If you wish, you can also use Cloudflare if you're a fan of the Cloudflare. But there's some others on there as well. So uh, OpenDNS is what I what I use. And then it's going to tell you that it relies on a third-party list in order to block ads. Here's a suggestion below, and there's only one suggestion. So it's either that or nothing. So I'm going to go with OK on that because that's what I want. And do I should install the web admin interface? I don't see a reason why you would say no but I want it definitely on because that's where you can see all the cool bits of information. Maybe there's a terminal interface that you prefer, but I, I do like the web interface very much. So I say, okay. It says, do I should install the web server light TPD, requires PHP modules. So if you disable this and do not have an existing web server and require PHP modules installed, the web interface will not function. So you definitely do want this. Do you want to log queries? I say yes, it's also recommended. And again, I like all that little bits of data. It uh, it pretty much excites me. Then select the privacy mode. I want to show everything. It's my network, but uh, if you want, if you are in a situation where you have to have, you know, keep some sort of anonymity, then you can go into anonymous mode. Um, more information on that is uh, is linked here. Uh, you can go onto the the documents for more information concerning these privacy modes. So it's going to go through here and do some additional configuration install some more things from GitHub. You are going to have to be patient. This does take a little while to do, but it is worth the wait. So to configure the devices, use PyHole as the DNS server, using this as my IP address, and it is set static now. So when I want to, if I want to access it, pi.hole slash admin, or directly admin web page login password, is also given at this point here. You need to record that in some way. Uh, again, this is why it's nice to have the terminal logged in remotely for this because this will allow you to copy and paste that to Bitwarden or some other text file that that stores your passwords. But Bitwarden is, uh, is what I use to manage my passwords. So if you don't record that, you're going to regret it. In fact, I don't even know how to fix that. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm going to reboot this machine. So go ahead and just let it boot up. I can verify that it works. I can check the host name. See that it actually did what it's supposed to do. And yes, it is at 10.90. So now I can go into the pie hole and I can see, well, you're not gonna see any statistics because this is not set up, but here you can then log into it where I can punch in that password that you saw earlier. And here's where you can go through and you can check the logs, look at your long-term data graphics. Now nothing here is gonna be very interesting. You can whitelist certain domains if you if you need to. You can also blacklist some other domains. And then you can also disable this thing for periods of time or indefinitely. Uh, if you do have problems where maybe you can't access a website, you have some other issues because it's an egregious website that's poorly set up, then you can uh, disable it for whatever reason. Uh, in the settings though, 
this is uh this is important here i think so for the web interface you can do it this is an auto theme here but i i prefer to do the pie hole midnight theme dark if you want to set up you know host names so to log in remotely to a machine you can set that all up here works real well Whatever. Now, I'm not going to go through all these things in detail because that is beyond the scope of this video and the article I wrote. Um, I just wanted to provide an easy way of getting you set up using a Raspberry Pi as a Pi hole. Take it from zero to about 55 and, uh, and then you can explore from there. Once you're set up, you set up your local router to use this as your DNS uh, server, then everything will work accordingly. I go to my local Pi hole and show you some of my statistics here. So total queries. In the last 24 hours, 116,000, 34,000 of those have been blocked, which is almost 30%. Gives you the number, number of domains blocked. You your query types, your upstream server. You have uh, top permitted domains, top blocked domains, and then your clients as well. So you can see this machine that I'm on is my um, biggest offender. I don't have any specific numbers on the improved speed and efficiency of my network, but it is noticeable. Since I do have a somewhat limited bandwidth, kind of a tiny pipe, I do need to extract every bit of performance out of my pipe to the World Wide Web. It's not just me on this network, there's other people too, so if they're getting bombarded with requests, it affects my ability to accomplish the things that I need to accomplish. I can say at this time, the greatest area of improvement is the time it takes to load web pages. Uh, the web experience is vastly improved using this. The pile has certainly earned its keep as a key device that will stay on my network. It's a great tool to prevent unnecessary DNS requests from taking place. I see it as keeping my browsers more honest. I wish this wasn't a necessary device to have, but it has absolutely become one. Maybe one day the internet will not be the cesspool of trackers as it has become, but until that point, Pi-hole will continue to filter the cruft and ameliorate the situation. You might find this especially important if you have a metered connection and all that additional web traffic will eat up your, your bandwidth pretty significantly. So this is important to you know, protect your bottom line. If you have any questions if, about the Pi Hole, if you have any troubles getting it installed, you can send me an email to me at cubicalnate.com. You can leave a comment in the uh, below in the, in the doobly-doo. I'm also on Telegram, on Matrix. I won't make you an expert on the Pi Hole, but I can at least get you going with it and improve your own web experience. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch us. Hopefully it was useful. And until next time, see us.